problem. <laughs> I'll just wait. <laughs> Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all here to Prince of Peace and welcome those who are with us on the camera. Uh, just a couple of announcements, actually only one announcement from me this morning, and that is that the newsletter items are due today. Um, but I know that there's a couple of announcements from the congregation. Um, Let's see, start with you and then we'll go to Joy. <laughs> I've been told that there is a correction in the bulletin under flowers today, given by Terry and Cheryl Anderson in honor of Terry's 80th birthday. And he informs me that it should be actually 60. <laughs> <laughs> However, on Facebook this morning, it did say 80. So if you will join me, Okay, refrain but no repeat. <laughs> Are there any other announcements or concerns from the congregation? There being none, then let us continue our order of worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Amen. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, 
Forgive us and grant us your mercy. Amen. God is a cup of cold water when in we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. We are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace and your words of justice and mercy. Reshape the world, mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 28. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen, may the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people, the prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly with me from Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 6. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as of sin. You were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy 
gospel for this day is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do we have any young people willing to come up front here this morning? All right. Okay, have a seat. It's always better when you're relaxed. How are you doing today? Doing? You having any fun? I hope so. Hope you're having some fun. I got some words. Uh, see if you can tell me where they come from. They start out with, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bonds which have held it to another. Do you have any idea where those words come from? No? <laughs> well, you haven't had civics class yet, right? <laughs> those are the opening words to the Declaration of Independence. Do you have any idea what that means? Yeah. Okay. Well, by the time you get to high school, they'll have you learn those words. <laughs> All right. What this is, is when we came to this land here, we were still a part of the English government. But we got big enough and strong enough and got to be ourselves enough that we didn't want to be part of the English government anymore. So we made a declaration, a, a statement saying what we mean. And we said to them that we want to be free people. And it's a really important document because it's one of the very first documents to spell out what freedom means. Okay? So, uh, do you know when Independence Day is? July 4th. July 4th. Right. Excellent. It's your birthday. <laughs> well, wonderful. You were born on a very special day then. You are born the same day the country was born. All right. That's great. <laughs> Well, let's have a quick prayer, and then I'll let you go back to where you came. Great Lord God, we give you thanks for these young bodies and these young minds. We give you thanks for open hearts and open brains. We ask that you fill those minds with your love and those hearts with your serving. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys, especially for coming up on your birthday. Okay, you can go back now. My civics teacher would be proud. <laughs> From the good news according to Matthew, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple Truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I'll start with Jeremiah. Well, not really with Jeremiah. I'll start with one word that he says. Jeremiah is going to speak to a group of people. But he starts off with answering what they just said the things that they had just started with. But he comes back with a sentence of one word. There aren't too many things we can use as a sentence and just one word. The text says, the prophet Jeremiah said, 
Amen. One word at the start, at the start of his speaking, not at the end. We so often think of Amen as a word that we use to finish things. Now, I was going to bring these books up here with me until I realized how many I was going to have, and I decided not to. <laughs> uh, but the old black hymnal, or dark blue hymnal, depends which one you had, the SBH, that's the service book and hymnal, every hymn ended with an amen. All of them did. In the red hymnal, the uh, CSV common service book, uh, almost every hymn ended with an amen. Then we uh, got to the green hymnal, the LBW, the Lutheran Book of Worship, and only those hymns considered to be prayers ended in amen. And now since we passed through that green hymnal and we've gotten to the burgundy one, you can't have to say that because you don't want to confuse as the red one. That's the ELW, the Evangelical Lutheran Worship. Uh, I don't think any of the hymns in that end in Amen. Now, now this is my own prejudice, but I think that all hymns are prayers. There's a, a good old saying that goes that uh, those who sing pray twice. I really think so. But this is taking me away from what I was trying to get at, and that's about the word Amen. We think of it as a way to end things, uh, not as a way to, to start them, and certainly not as a way to express one sentence. Amen is a Hebrew word, and we can see, uh, we can tell by its definition that it's a word that isn't really clear even to the, the Hebrews. Um, it's hard to define what the, the speaker meant. In my uh, Hebrew lexicon, it says, Amen means, so be it, or so it is. So it means, uh, that is exactly the way it is, or it means, that is exactly the way I would like it to be. If we look at the passage from Jeremiah in, in different translations, and this is why I thought I'd end up with too many books up here, because I'll be looking at a couple different translations too, but we can see the confusion. The NEB or New English Bible, uh, Jeremiah says in there, may it be so, instead of amen. In the Jerusalem Bible, uh, he says, I hope so. In the TEV, that's the Bible we call the Good News Bible, um, Jeremiah says, wonderful, instead of amen. And the one that comes closest, uh, but uses the most words, is the Contemporary English Bible, and where Jeremiah says, I hope the Lord does everything that you said. So you can see even the, the Bible translators don't get it, don't have it easy to do. In today's, uh, I started off thinking rural, but even in today's urban uh, black churches, uh, someone might shout out from the a congregation uh, with an amen to encourage the pastor to, to kind of cheer them on. When you hear an amen, you know that they're agreeing with you. They're, yeah, I like what he said. I, I hope it's that way. What you don't want to hear is when somebody calls out from the congregation, Lord, help him. Uh, that's when they're praying to the Holy Spirit to help you get out of this rut that you've just gotten yourself into. <laughs> It shows, it throws off your timing a little bit when, uh, when the congregation talks back to you while you're preaching, but it's good to know that they're listening. It's, it's a good thing to, to happen. And in case you're wondering, I would gladly accept anyone uh, encouraging or asking questions or commenting on my sermons while I'm giving them. Uh, we don't usually do that uh, in Lutheran churches, we're too polite for that usually, but, but uh, it's perfectly acceptable. And uh, in the black Lutheran churches, they do do that. Uh, I've preached to a few in Chicago and uh, they'll talk to you. They'll let you know where you're at. 
Now, in today's lesson from Romans, oh, wait a minute, I didn't, I skipped clean past something I was going to say. Uh, as to the word amen, what it is not, is it isn't a way to say, I'm through praying now, Lord, so don't listen to what I'm going to say for the next hour or so on. The rest of this meeting or, or through the rest of this meal or so on like that. It isn't a way to say goodbye to God. It just says, I agree with what they or what I just said. It's a sign of agreement, not a sign of goodbye. So keep that in mind. When you say your prayer uh, and you say the amen, that didn't tell God to leave. He's still going to be there listening to you. Now to today's lesson from Romans. This is a part of an explanation as to why Christianity is one of the most difficult religions to live with. Christianity is tough because it's so easy. We want to work at, at things. We want to earn things. We want to, to pay our way. We don't want something that's free and easy. We find that hard to live with. Paul is telling us that we are free from sin because of the grace of God. Now, now you have to think about what that means. We are free from sin right here, right now, just, just where we are. As, as you sit there in your pews, you are free from sin. We don't need to ask for forgiveness we're already forgiven. We don't have to make sacrifices to buy ourselves away from sin. Jesus Christ made the ultimate payment on that. We could sin and be forgiven even as we're doing it. That's what makes Christianity so ter terribly difficult. Because then you ask the question, well, why shouldn't we? Well, Paul is telling us that we become what we do. It's, it's a little like uh, you are what you eat. Yeah. We become what we do. If we knowingly sin, we are the kind of being who is a sinner. You know what Paul is talking about if you've ever dealt with uh, anybody who's an alcoholic? or a dope addict, or a compulsive gambler, or, or anyone who, who is a slave to ideas or habits in their life, something that has a hold of them. The obsession owns you. You are a slave to it. And this isn't always you know, what we think of as bad things, uh, evil things. I knew a couple who spent uh, tens of thousands of dollars to go to New Orleans when the Bears were in the Super Bowl in 86. I'm sure there's most of you here remember 86. They couldn't afford it, but it was the Bears. In the Super Bowl, it was the Bears, and they couldn't help themselves. They went down there without any reservations, without any tickets, knowing that they were going to have to get all that at the highest possible prices. But they couldn't help themselves. It was the Bears in the Super Bowl. We become what we do. Uh, by that, I mean, if I had asked them for that kind of money for the church, they would have laughed me out of their house because they would know that I would know they couldn't afford that. But we, as Christians, aren't here to earn our way out of hell. We aren't here to convince God that, that we deserve to be loved. We aren't here to look good to, for someone who might be waiting for us at the pearly gates. God loves us. The scriptures are quite clear about that. God loves us who we are, as we are. Now that's 
The other part that's hard about Christianity, God will accept us as we are. And then once accepted, God will help us become what we're capable of becoming. So we don't have to stop being slaves to sin for God to accept us. God will help us escape from that. We are here to tell God that we love God in return. We are here to show God that we are willing slaves to worship and good habits. We live righteous lifestyles because we want to be among those who live righteous lifestyles. We don't have to. And that's what makes Christianity so hard. We don't have to, only in as much as we are what we do. We do a righteous lifestyle because it pleases God. And it's, it's God, what can we do? We can't help ourselves. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Let us now confess our Christian faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended from the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray for the church, for wisdom to heed the voices of prophets in our midst, who cast a vision of God's promised future, for courage to welcome people whom society rejects, for resolve to serve all in need, God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for creation, for all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams, for lands experiencing scorching heat, drought, or wildfires, for conservation organizations and environmental activists, for scientists working on clean energy solutions, God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this nation and all nations, for presidents, governors, and legislators, for judges, juries, district attorneys, and public defenders, for military personnel, for those who are incarcerated, guide us in ways of freedom that promote the common good. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for exiles, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, for victims of harassment, torture or abuse, for those who are ill, especially today we pray for Becky, Elizabeth, BJ, Mike, LaVon, Diana, Philip, Paul, Sylvia, Rosie, Judy, Marilyn, Wayne, Aaron, Brent, Barb, Carol, Jean, Ludwig, Mary Ellen, and the Baxter family. And for all those who we name now. Luke. Um, Mary Ellen. For any near death and for all who grieve, God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for children, for their safety at home and in child care settings, for their flourishing at summer programs and camps, for the many people who care for them, including parents and grandparents, child care workers and teachers, coaches, counselors, and mentors, pediatricians and psychologists, God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints and prophets who have received the free gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May their lives of humble service inspire us in faith. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us show signs of that peace to one another.
God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, fulfilling the promise of the resurrection you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body, people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to all present, saying, all of you eat of this. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, when he had given thanks, he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, All of you drink of this. This is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember our Christ until he comes again in glory. And the assurance that Christ is with us in this meal, we now recite together the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
Christ given for you. The body of 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 Christ given for you. Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. You commune. The blessings of Christ be upon you. The blessings of Christ be upon you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. given for you, the body of Christ given for you, the body of Christ given for you, the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat, this is the body of Christ given for you. 
Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Stand. And now may the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We have a communion kit going home. Let us send it with prayer. Great Lord God, we send your body and your blood to this person who is at home. We ask that you send us with them, that we might strengthen them as well as you. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks to the smallest seed bless, keep, and sustain us all now and in the age to, of the end, end of the age. Um. And I give thanks to all those who didn't sing, God save the king. <laughs> Go in peace, share the harvest. Thank you, God.